Um, this is my WWE Backlash 2009 pay-per-view predictions. Before I get into my pay-per-view predictions, just want to plug one user. A lot of you are probably subscribed to his last account, and that's Mark P. Uh, he just came back with a new account. His last account got suspended. So I know a lot of you that probably view my videos and aren't subscribed to me probably were subscribed to him as well. So just want to throw out his channel. He makes good videos. If you are subscribed to his last account, go resub. If you've never checked out his videos before, go ahead and check him out. He makes good videos. His new account is Mark RP101. Now let me get into my WWE Backlash 2009 pay-per-view predictions. The opening match will be for the ECW Championship, which is uh, Jack Swagger defending the ECW Championship versus Christian, and this could be a good match. Now, I haven't really seen their matches they had against each other. I think in the last week in February or early March, a lot of people have said it has been very good, but I've watched, you know, Jack Swagger a little more over the last couple weeks, and especially his match he had on Raw with uh, John Cena was a good showing from him, and was one of those matches that kind of somewhat made him seem a little more, you know, made him seem a little better as champion, even though he did kind of botch in that match, it still helped him out as well, but um, he's still, I'm still going to kind of compare him to Kurt Angle 99, where he might, where he's a good wrestler, but he doesn't really have a character or any personality quite yet, but I think he can develop that down the line, which probably is what WWE wants to do anyway with him, build him up like this, and then Probably within a year or two, I could see WWE doing a lot of stuff with Jack Swagger. He's a good wrestler, I will give him that, but he does need to have some type of character first before he can really get a big push on Raw or SmackDown. But uh, he probably would work out better on SmackDown because SmackDown they kind of do it in a way where you don't have to be, you know, so promo driven as you would on Monday Night Raw. And um, since Christian Cage, uh, well, now just Christian, since Christian is still on the uh, ECW brand and didn't get drafted during the WWE draft, I do see him defeating Jack Swagger of the ECW for the ECW title. Could be a good match. This would be the match I think would be the best thing to have as an opener, even though I think the next match will probably be what they will have as the opener or possibly as the opener, and that's uh, CM Punk versus Kane, which this is just a pointless match, just thrown together. Um, this is just a match they thrown together the last couple days. Really no purposes being on here. Now, there's at least one reasoning that makes this match make a little sense, and especially CM Punk being on this pay-per-view and being a participant in some match in some shape or form on here. Um, he'll, win, he'll probably win this match against Kane. I'm pretty sure he will. That will look terrible if he loses the Kane and then later on cashes in the money in the bank. So I'm pretty sure, you know, CM Punk is going to defeat Kane in this match. Then the reason why he's in a match for this pay-per-view is later on in the evening. I could possibly see him cashing in his money in the bank kind of the same way he did the la last year when he cashed in the money in the bank against Edge last year. Even though I would much rather see him cap like kind of, you know, do the RBD thing where he um, makes a match for, you know, a certain pay-per-view or whatnot and then cashes it in there. But uh, I think on I think coming on Raw or SmackDown Raw very soon, they're going to be in Chicago, Illinois. So that would be a perfect time for him to cash it in if they just wait till that Monday Night Raw. But I see them wait until I see them doing it this night on this pay-per-view, even though I'd much rather, like I said, rather it be just a one-on-one -on -one match and he wins the title fairly because that will help his credibility out a whole lot better, unless they turn him heel, which I don't think WWE will do that quite yet. Then the next matchup will be the Chris Jericho versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat match. And for what uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat did at WrestleMania and did on Raw the following night, he definitely shows that he can still go in the ring which uh, really surprised me due to uh, him not wrestling for so many years, especially having uh, back issues as well. So I'm really looking forward to this match. I don't think it's going to be anything excellent, but I think it's going to be one of those matches that are at least going to be an enjoyable match. And I see Chris Jericho defeating Ricky the Dragon Steamboat because it's really going to be no purpose served if Ricky the Dragon Steamboat defeats Chris Jericho. That will hurt Chris Jericho on SmackDown a lot if he loses to Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And then, I don't think anyone, <clears throat> even though I like seeing this Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and seeing him have this kind of one last run, I mean, how much longer can it go anyway? You know, this would be good just to have a match on here. This would be his last match, kind of his little send-off here. And I think he could have a very good match with Jericho. Um, and it's going to be at least an enjoyable match, I would say. 
Then the next thing is going to be the Raw or SmackDown moment of the night that shouldn't even be on this pay-per-view. Uh, <clears throat> it might be a little funny, but it's going to be one of those things that should have been just saved for Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. I don't know how it even dragged out this far to the uh, WWE Backlash pay-per-view, and that's the whole Kali and Santino or Santina kiss cam thing they've been talking about doing for a while, so they're going to be doing it on this pay-per-view. Um, don't understand why it had to get dragged out on this far. They should have just got this done this past week on Raw or SmackDown or just done it the night after Backlash on Raw because it's just going to be probably you know five to ten minutes of wasted airspace on pay-per-view, even though it might be a little funny, but it's starting to get a point where it's starting to go too far and, you know, just end this. I mean, you've kind of already, you know, done as much as you could with it as far as comedy base could go. Um, but obviously they're going to do it on this pay-per-view. Probably another five, ten minutes of a pay-per-view that they're going to waste here for something they could possibly throw a better match on here, possibly a tag team title match that probably would have worked out a whole lot better than that type of segment being on this pay-per-view. Then the uh, next matchup will be the Jeff Hardy versus Matt Hardy I Quit match. Now, I know a lot of people obviously know the rumors of Jeff Hardy that coming up in the next couple of months that it, um, possibly he might uh, stop wrestling and get out of his WWE contract, and that's pretty much he'll be done with WWE and done with wrestling in general to focus on other things. Now, Jeff Hardy has done this in the past, so it will not shock me if these rumors are true, but... I'm not really going to believe it until I actually see it and see it happen. Now, if Jeff Hardy loses this match to Matt Hardy in this I Quit match, then I'd possibly say the rumors look uh, pretty, sh pretty almost 100% sure that they're probably true because I can't see you know Matt Hardy defeating Jeff Hardy this many times in a row without you know these Jeff Hardy rumors being true. But uh, see Jeff Hardy uh, winning this match, defeating Matt Hardy, just because. Uh, not saying that the rumors can't be true, but I just don't see it see it being true at least at this point. Uh, but it possibly could be because you know there's been other times in Jeff Hardy's wrestling career where he's kind of got burnt out and he's kind of lost his passion for wrestling, and that's like one of the reasons why I can't really respect him too much because he always does this a lot, you know, very so often. It's probably the third time that he's possibly said he's been burnt out or you know, lost his passion for wrestling. I think that's, you know, something that I kind of can't really respect him for, even though I think he's a good performer in the ring, And I'm, but I'm not, like, someone that likes him as much as a lot of people do, though. Um, I think Matt Hardy's a better overall performer, and I think Matt Hardy can do more for your promotion than Jeff Hardy. Maybe not for merchandise sales, but for overall-wise, and who's more reliable is obviously Matt Hardy. But I see Jeff Hardy winning this. Now, like I said, if Matt Hardy does pick up the victory in this I Quit match, then it could look like these rumors are pretty much 100% clear that they are true. Because, like I said, I can't see them having Matt Hardy go over Jeff Hardy that many times in a row without those rumors being true. Uh, but we know WWE, even if they are true, they might have Jeff Hardy just go over anyway. Um, then the next matchup will be the last man standing match with uh, John Cena versus Edge. This is one of those matches on this pay-per-view I'm looking forward to a lot. This match and the previous match, the I Quit match with Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy, those two matches I feel are going to be the best matches of the night with. The last man standing match kind of just being a little bit better than the I Quit match, but I see both of them being very, very good overall. And I'm really looking forward to this I, uh, last man standing match with uh, John Cena versus Edge. These two have very good chemistry in the ring with each other, so this match should be very good like pretty much all of the rest of their matches. And I see uh, John Cena. I see John Cena retaining this title since he just won it at WrestleMania. And the other thing is I see CM Punk cashing the money in the bank. So the last thing I want to see is Edge win this title here, have it for, you know, five minutes or so, and CM Punk come out here and cash the money in the bank and just have, you know, have Edge have, you know, a five-minute title reign and have Cena have less than a month title reign and then CM Punk win it and probably... With CM Punk, I'll be shocked if WWE actually does the good thing this time and actually gives him a good lengthy title reign and a title reign that doesn't seem like a complete joke like last year's title reign he had. Hopefully, you know, if they do do the CM Punk cashing in the money in the bank here, hopefully, um, like I said, I wish they would just have him, you know, come out here and challenge, you know, John Cena, say if John Cena retains like I said he will, you know, challenge him for a match at the next pay-per-view judgment day 
or just you know, match tomorrow night on Raw, to, you know, kind of spike the ratings in Raw, just do something like that where it would actually be a one-on-one -on -one match. Unless, like I said, they have CM Punk turn heel on this pay-per-view. They have CM Punk turn heel. This would be a great time. Uh, Cena's a very over. He's one of WWE's biggest faces, and it would be a perfect time for him to turn heel, and I would definitely like to see it. But you already kind of got, you know, enough heels on SmackDown. You got... Chris Jericho and Edge, which those two are very good heels, and even though I think CM Punk can overshadow them as far as being a heel, I don't think in WWE booking-wise they would let him do that, but like I said, I see John Cena retaining here and beating uh, Edge in this last main stadium match, see this being the match of the night, and uh, like I said, I see CM Punk coming out here, cashing the money in the bank, you know, John Cena and Edge will both be pretty much, you know, beaten up in this match, and uh, CM Punk will come out here, cash money bank, hit the go to sleep, and become the uh, new uh, world heavyweight champion, and then take the uh, title to the uh, SmackDown brand. So that's what I see happening here. And then, um, then you got the, um, then you got the uh, six man tag with uh, Batista, Triple H, and Shane McMahon versus the legacy of Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, and Ted DiBiase. Six man tag. Kind of TNA rules here, WCW rules here, which I really hate when companies do this with their main event and do like a tag match or a six-man tag or eight-man tag or something like that, and the title's on the line, and they do some fucked-up rule here where, say if uh, Rhodes and DiBiase pin someone on the opposite side, Randy Orton um, wins the uh, WWE title. Then if uh, someone other than Triple H, Batista, or Shane McMahon gets the pinfall on either one, of the uh, three opposing guys on the other side, Triple H retains the title. I just think that's pointless. But since they since they're doing that, they'll obviously you know if they weren't doing that, they'll probably book it in a way where Shane and Batista, where Batista and Triple H will fight over pinfalls if they weren't doing that. Um, now see Randy Orton picking up the title here some way or another, possibly a Batista uh, heel turn or possibly Shane McMahon turning on Batista. And Triple H, or even if they do not do a turn heel here, I do see uh, Randy Orton's side winning this match and Randy Orton winning the title since, obviously, in this case, Triple H doesn't have to take the pinfall to lose the title to Randy Orton. And if Triple H's side wins this match here, it would be pretty much the end of this whole Triple H and Orton feud. And even though I want it to end, I know it's not going to end after this pay-per-view, so... For it to continue, you're going to have to have Randy Orton win the title here. So I see Randy Orton's side some way or another, possibly with Shane McMahon being in there to take the pinball, even if Shane McMahon doesn't have, even if Shane or Batista doesn't turn, I see Randy Orton's side picking up the victor here. So just a quick run through what I saw, see happening with this pay-per-view as far as my predictions. I see Christian winning the ECW title. Um, I see uh, CM Punk defeating Kane. And later on in the evening, cashing in and probably winning the title from John Cena. Um, with the Chris Jericho and Steamboat match, I see Jericho winning just because it's going to be completely pointless if Steamboat wins. What is he going to gain from it? Even though I wouldn't mind seeing a one last run with him, I think he's kind of it's kind of ran its course already. How much longer can you uh, milk this whole Steamboat return here anyway? I think you know this would be a perfect time to end it. Uh, the Kali and Santino or Santina kiss cam. I don't really care about that. It'd be just five, ten minutes of the pay-per-view that could be used for something else other than, you know, a segment that should be just done on Raw or SmackDown, not done on pay-per-view. Uh, Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy in an I Quit match. This should be a very good match. Uh, with without This probably is going to be one of the best matches of the night with the last man standing with uh, John Cena and Edge. In my opinion, probably going to be the best match of the night. But it could go either way because both, both of those matches with the stipulation, especially with uh, John Cena and Edge's chemistry they had in the past, that should be a great match. And Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy with I Quit stipulations should be very good. So I see Jeff Hardy winning his match. I see John Cena retaining. And then I see CM Punk cashing in the money in the bank and defeating John Cena, even though I'd much rather would have John Cena and CM Punk save for Judgment Day and have a one-on-one -on -one match against each other. Or, you know, do it on Monday Night Raw the following night to help out ratings with Monday Night Raw and have CM Punk, you know, announce it on this pay-per-view that he's going to cash in the following night on Monday Night Raw. 
instead of doing, you know, the cheap shot way, him coming out there, just hitting his finisher and pinning John Cena and winning the title. Now, it works It works for Edge, but it doesn't really work for CM Punk. It just makes his title reign seem very weak when he has to win the title like that, unless, like I said, they have him turn heel earlier. And then with the main event, I see some way or another Orton winning the WWE title uh, with probably Shane McMahon taking the pinfall for Triple H, Batista, and, Sh and Shane McMahon's side. And, um, yeah, that's it for my WWE Backlash predictions, and that's it. Peace.